crisis of governance. Few people have spoken of anything else in business circles over the last few months, even though rates have tightened and growth slowed. So as India's parliamentarians meet up in the capital to discuss the country's future, I caught up with one of corporate India's most feisty ambassadors, Bajaj Group's patriarch Rahul Bajaj, and I began by asking him what he made of what he saw. Yes, people are unhappy. Many people are unhappy, not only industrialists. And I think there are broadly three reasons. One is all these scams and all, which I don't think is bad in the sense the corruption is bad. That didn't start yesterday. That started years ago. It was under the carpet. So it's great that it's coming out of the carpet due to media, except that I don't like the trial by media, that overreach. Otherwise, but for media, it won't have come out. And the new Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of India. Outstanding. I don't know him. I've never met him. I've never talked to him, Mr. Kaparia. One man, see, what man can so, make so many changes. No one man can do everything, but can make a lot of changes. All the judgments are changing in the high courts. And all, they're getting afraid. So because of that, this is coming out. And if somebody asks me, because of this investment will be uh, delayed? No, no, no. They are happy, the foreigners. Either they don't talk about it, partly out of courtesy, and partly even if they are friends, there's nothing to talk about. But they are happy. They didn't like that corruption going on. They were at a handicap. Those of them who, for whatever reason, legal or otherwise, did not believe in corruption. Now, they are hoping. It'll Nowhere care. is there a country with no corruption, but it will substantially. I believe that there are people who say, Raul, 63 years, no change will take place. I don't agree with that. But the second big problem is, due to this, I believe, I have no evidence if you ask me, the decision-making of bureaucrats from the junior most to senior most has stopped. I won't quote a name of uh, the person, a former cabinet secretary, good friend of mine, a very senior person, uh, told me that people have come to him. Mm -hmm. Sir, at the most we'll resign. But till we are here, we are not taking decisions. Send it up, let somebody else take it. Delay it, ask four questions. Because with the good things, the pendulum has swung the other way. So, no decision making, that is causing a problem investment. And finally, how can the reforms be passed? Every bill which is not a money bill, and these are all non-money bills, budget got passed, no? Has to be passed by both the houses. And they've so not been functioning. no majority in Raj Sabha. And they've not they, been functioning, the parliament they has take not been BJP on board, all the bills can be passed, irrespective of the left, or the Samajwadi, or the RJD. They are supporting, even if they don't support. But, as I've said earlier, with folded hands, who am I? I'm nobody. What the hell is Congress and BJP doing? What are they doing? Why can't they, for the good of the country, move forward together? You go on Hindutva, you go on secularism, that's fine. But let the bills be passed. They have nothing to do with Hindutva. Even if you believe that BJP stands for RSS and whatnot, and you say they are pseudo-secular, who the hell cares? People don't care. The youngsters don't care. But what is the, the, the impact of this kind of a situation uh, prolonging, according to you, Mr. Bajaj, because as you, as, as you pointed out, there is a paralysis of the entire decision-making uh, process as we head into a slowdown year and we are in the midst of a slowdown year. That's the worst possible thing that can happen to this country. And that is what is causing the frustration. What would the answer be then? No, there are no easy answers. It's a combination. It's, for example, I just said, putting an end to some of these things by the right actions, not by under the carpet situation. And forget all. But the main opposition party and the Congress, I mean Republicans, Democrats, there are recent articles, economists, all they are also doing some stupid things over there and disagreeing with each other. But whether it's Labour and Conservatives in UK and other places, the two main parties at the centre have to get along. Why is GST not going to come from April 2012? DTC will come because you don't need the states for that. But GST won't. It should have come in 11 April. 
But it's not going to make it in uh, 12 either. I doubt. April. I wish. I'm still saying I hope it does. But it appears doubtful. So there may be some of the BJP ruled states are only talking about sovereignty, sovereignty. Now I've not talked to them. I don't want to be unfair to them. But as far as I'm concerned, GST is a must. It's one of the best reforms we can do uh, under the Indian taxation system ever since independence. And for heaven's sake, whoever you are, whichever state you are, including Congress, BJP, or a, don't come in the way. But do you think somewhere the problem is because each of the political parties in question, be it the Congress or the BJP, is fighting so many internal battles that they are conveniently blaming external factors for the lack of decision making? Because till now you've had uh, the CAG reports which have held up the parliament, then you've had uh, Anna Hazare's fast, then you've had Baba Ram Dev, then you've had uh, uh, inflation. And, uh, and I, in the midst of all of this, I've not seen even one single solution come in or an alternative come in from either side. So. How long can we go? If We've you, not had parliament in session for a long time. If you don't want to do the right thing, you can have hundreds of reasons, whether you are a BJP or a Congress, anybody else. One. Second, it appears, as everybody is talking about it, vote bank politics. Whether it will succeed in getting them votes, nobody, including them, knows. There is no market survey which gives you a correct picture. 2007 UP elections, the last date of the five phases or whatever it was, 2007 or 7, was 10th May. Results came out on 14th. Till 10th, everybody was saying, saying we will win. Correct. They have to say that. Between 10th and 14th May, tell the truth or say I don't know. They were telling me all figures of what they will get. BJP, Congress, Samajwadi Party and some people in Bhujan Samaj Party. None of them came near, near the correct figures. Means they didn't know. Hell with vote bank politics. Now it's easier said than done. But Mr. Advani, Mr. Arun Jaitli, Mr. Madam Shushma Swaraj and Gatkari and Manmohan Singh Ji and Sonia Ji, please, you know what is good for the nation more than Rahul Bajaj can ever know. Do something which is good for the country. But you know, this comes in the backdrop. I mean, you can accept indecision, you can accept a lot of that when the going is good, you know, because a lot of it gets glossed over by the sheer momentum of an economy. But you have a situation since the Commonwealth Games, very few infrastructure projects have actually got, got to go ahead. Finally, roads are seeing some traction. You know, you've had, uh, you know, power projects which are lying in the build-up stage, which will come up uh, uh, for, uh, you know, completion at a time when their uh, business plans will completely go uh, asunder because, you know, they've done it in a different metrics, different uh, kind of linkages drawn. How bad can it get from here if it is not a Nobody knows. The government will say, no, it's not bad. We expect 8.5 to 9% return. Nobody from the government, including Planning Commission, Reserve Bank, Finance Ministry, will say less than 8 for 2011-12. Nobody has said more than 9 either from the government. So 8 to 9. Uh, now people are more saying 8.5. Nobody is now saying 9. We want 9, we want 10, but later. This year will be about 9, subject to good monsoon and all that, which hopefully may be possible, but it's too early still to say. But there are others who started saying less than 8. Nobody is saying as yet less than 7 if there's any consolation. But seven and a half, which is not good enough. So, apart from what I say, people don't like to take decisions and uh, opposition in this. The other thing which you referred to, uh, infrastructure, whether it's roads or power, and like, are those two reasons. Apart from decision making, maybe, people are afraid. If I give the go-ahead, will I get caught? The other two are broad reasons of land acquisition and environment. My friend Mr. Jairam Ramesh was very famous, or should I say infamous, for environment and land acquisition is land acquisition. Singur and Mamta has made that famous. Then nobody says, I've written articles, I, as an industrialist, that you can't take land away from the farmer at an unreasonable price. If they come to take your house and my house, what will we feel and will we not fight till the end? So you have to pay a proper price. And then some annuity or what or a job, some matter of detail, we have no time to go into that. Be fair, but to say that you buy all your land, Mr. Private Sector, it's not possible. We will buy 50, 60, 70 percent, difficult enough, but we are prepared to consider doing that. But <coughs> 30, 40 percent, <laughs> sorry, you will have to buy for us. If somebody gets stuck, one farmer, two farmers get stuck, what do we do? He wants to blackmail us. The uh, NGO types who are pro these people is very good, I support them. But the sensible amongst them do say you can't go against growth and development. So that balance has to be maintained. Perhaps we in some cases went too much on environment. I am all for good do environment. Do you see that changing now? Do you see that? Uh... We will see what Jayanti Natarajan does, not they. It's Jairam versus Jayanti. Jayanti is not going to go just for growth and development. Her first day statements are pretty good. But I only hope 
that she will not be, in my view, Jairam won't agree with that, as pro-environment, which means always at the cost of development and growth, as Jairam appeared to us to be. What about infant mortality? What about my power sector? What about my infrastructure? Implication being, if you don't take care of those, this growth rate will not be maintained. It's not possible. The larger part about India is that somewhere we all, including the media channels, uh, headlines in, in uh, uh, various newspapers, we get carried away the, with the overall numbers. You mentioned 8, 8.5% and the constant missive is that it's great to have 8.5% when the world is growing at 1 or 2% if they're growing at all. But can we afford to hide behind those numbers, Mr. Bajaj, without addressing the problem? Because one could argue that the momentum of the Indian economy is taking it forward without any the entrepreneurs, the entrepreneurs. And the but entrepreneurs. is it enough in a country which has more below no, the poverty people? Down. The GDP is the indicator of all those things. Sure. But there is a time lag. Nobody says don't talk about the things. But and that's why we are saying now it may be seven and a half. Maybe I don't know. Why are we saying that? Your IIP is low. Index of industrial production. You see your manufacturing. You see your mining. You see your power production. Apart from the instead of. GDP, you know, the happiness index and all. I'm not getting into all that. Then there's no end to it. Fine. We ultimately need to be happy. So you have to see those factors. Inflation, of course. Uh, exchange rate of the Indian rupee. Everybody's depreciating the, their currency. Famous China, uh, what they are doing or not doing. They are not appreciating the currency if they should. And we are appreciating our currency. Over the last two, three years, visa with the dollar and the euro. It's 45. It used to be 49. Our exports are getting tremendously hurt. And now they are saying, uh, we'll remove DEPB to save six or 8,000 crores of rupees. I'm like, I, I don't want to get into that WTO compliant and all that. I mean, I have strong views on that. Sure. So, uh, yes, if you only say, and maybe the government would like to do that, we have a 8.5% growth rate is very good. And I would not say no to that. I would say yes. But what about inflation, Mr. Government? What about infant mortality? What about my power sector? What about my infrastructure? Implication being, if you don't take care of those, this growth rate will not be maintained. It's not possible. You know, you watch the economy from, for many cycles. You have 10 interest rate hikes. You have inflation, which is at a high. How do you see the trajectory of growth going? Do you think we will be able to maintain this 8% going forward? So that we have already answered. Uh, we are doing 9, almost 9. So that, I think, is difficult to maintain. Hopefully, 8 will be maintained. But now, whether it's 8 and a half, this year, 11, 12 or 7.5 is important, but it will be what it is. Question is, what is causing it? Agriculture, services and industry. Next broad factor, agriculture, do what you can to improve yield per acre. The productivity in yield in India is terrible. We have only 3 to 4 percent as CII has informed the government, maximum less than 4 percent of total Indian land covered by industry. We are not taking away the agriculture land. We got 4%, not 40. But the question is, agriculture, for whatever it is producing, keeping in mind the better uh, yield countries, is occupying four or five times the land it needs to occupy. And that's huge. So improve that. Improve industry. Improve infrastructure. Do certain things to improve supply. Only higher rates of interest are not controlling your inflation. So, if you don't do those things, you are going to suffer. Now, when you will suffer, how much you are suffer, I don't care. I'm not comfortable with the fact that I'll suffer. I'm not an uh, academic uh, to calculate whether this year will be seven or seven and a half, eight and a half. It's none of my business. If I see this is not being put right, it's wrong. And its effect is bad. How bad? Who the hell cares? You know, one of the worrying factors has been that a lot of the growth that we've seen in the last couple of years has been a jobless kind of growth. It's been largely growth driven by more money being put into the rural areas through various schemes, which are very important. Do you think that will create some kind of anomalies going forward and that's going to be a big concern? No, uh, two separate things. Money being spent was for inclusive growth, for the poor. There we only say, you teach them to fish is better than giving them a fish than they can eat only for a day. So, Marega can you can keep paying them whether 200 rupees a day or one member of the family for 200 days a year. As far as the output is more than the cost to the government of the input, which is the cost of labor and overheads, no, is good. But that's not happening. Apart from the chori and the garbad, which again I have no evidence, but from what I hear, let somebody say that's not 100% reaches the fellow. 
Somebody get up and save from the government? Nobody is saying that. There's a 10, 20, 40, 50 percent leakage like in every other scheme. Delivery implementation weak due to inefficiency and corruption. So you improve that and even after that, it has to be given within five kilometers or miles of his residence. You don't give him that Narega thing by going from here from his home to 100 kilometers. How the hell will you? So it's not easy, but create roads, create not create something. Somebody should plan that. I can't answer that question on a TV interview in 10 minutes. For that, you don't need approval of the government, approval of the parliament. So don't blame BJP for that. The three reasons are either indecision due to this no decision being taken, corruption, or environment, forest area, go area, no go area of uh, Jairam, or the land acquisition. Take care of the environment, take care of sustainable development, but take decisions. Under that guise, nothing is happening. Give a yes or a no. Keeping in mind, you need that much coal. Otherwise, you can't get power. The railways won't move the coal. This, just get it moving. Decision making. Somebody has to see ki, where is a go, no go. You are, you see, you are not doing anything. You are just keeping it on hold. Inaction is the worst thing that can happen. But you know, you, you, you've spent time watching Indian politics. You've met all these people. You, 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 you are in touch with them. What sense are you getting? I'm, I'm sure they also realize that these are issues that the country will have to deal with some time. Do you see any change in the mindset? I don't want to say that. Not a nice thing to say. Some are not the right kind of people in this government mm. and in the opposition. Let's forget them. They can't. But they come in the way. But there are a lot of people in the opposition, in all the parties, uh, but especially the main opposition party and the government, starting from the Prime Minister here, from Mr. Jaitley and Mr. Shushma Swaraj over there, uh, who are positive, who are nationalists, who would like to do good for the uh, country. And as I said earlier, what's preventing these people, except maybe vote bank politics, and I'm not even sure whether it's the right vote bank politics. But who am I to say that? What do I know about vote bank politics, supposedly? Uh, so, these are the guys in the government who the government should take decisions, clear projects. Under the guise of environment, protect some, no, but don't delay everything. In decision or no growth and development, then there is something wrong happening. They have to go together, hand in hand. After this uh, period of inaction, do you see change at all with this fuel policy and the and the fuel subsidies? policy doesn't prove anything to me. It only proves that those companies were going broke. There's a limit. So Pelek, maybe somebody else was shouting, then Murli they were out shouting. Now Jaipal really was shouting. And whoever is shouting. So it was more, it was not it's a reform. reform. It's a reform measure, of course. But it was not uh, a I think movement towards large reform. should be completely decontrolled, which it was, but in practice it is not. And diesel, everything should be done for the below the poverty line. You pay them by direct transfer, by cash or uh, a voucher. It may take a year or two till the UID comes. So today, everybody doesn't have a bank account. 40% sure. don't have. All those issues are there. But at least agree in principle. Agree in principle that this should be done as soon as you can ensure that because the below the poverty line should not suffer. The need-based, merit-based subsidy should be given. But otherwise, the answer to that question, earlier really question of yours, I get the feeling that this... It's very funny. First, I said they are behaving childlike, fighting with each other. The top people, some of whom I named, uh, who are positive nationalists, apart from blaming each other, they want to do good. They want to do all that I'm saying and much more, but they know more than me. But I think they are feeling helpless. But why? They are blaming someone else for their helplessness. There is a sense in middle-class India that there is a whiff of change in politics, that there are chief ministers at the state level who are doing genuine good and are hence coming back time after time, and there are enough instances of people who are in the second third time. But do you think politics is changing in that sense, or do you think... Uh, Generalizations, I don't know, but Nitish Kumar is a good example. He won again and again. In her own way, my close friend, Shushila, Shushila, sorry, Sheila Dixit, third time winner, is not a joke. Uh, so even Naveen Patnaik, to some extent, even in spite, of, in spite of leaving, BJP has done well. In fact, I said the last Bihar elections gave me a lot of comfort because it showed that votes can be had for growth and development and law and order and not just for caste base and money and this and that. Similarly, the last uh, Tamil Nadu elections, as everybody believes, I'm saying nothing new, and common sense shows that corruption did not pay. 
and I'm not anti that party or that party, but the ruling party obviously had more money than the other party, by definition, and didn't win. Not only didn't win, it lost badly. It was not like Kerala, which was very close for UID and LDF. So, that they lost so badly. So, these are good signs. At the moment, I'm talking, I don't want to quote other states where disaster is taking place, but I'm talking center. Hmm. We know we are a federal structure. We know lots of things states can do, including law and order. Fine. So, some states are doing better than others. Fine. We'll come to that. What about the center? Is, is it unimportant? In, even in a federal setup, nobody says that. Why don't we put it right? Why are you feeling helpless? Why are you blaming the other side? Why can't you get together, maintain your identities and fight in elections? Why can't you agree to have parliament and assembly elections will take place simultaneously and only every five years? And there's a way I don't have time to go into that. The German system, the vote of no conference accompanied by a vote of conference in another party or another person. So you will not have midterm 52, 57, 62 and 67. Parliament assembly every five years and together less money spent for the nation for the parties less this black all money. All sounds logical. Who? Where is the stop coming? You think? Is it mindsets? Is it the old way of doing things? Is if it I the knew it, system? either I'll become prime minister or I'll put some of these guys in jail. <laughs> so it's a good thing that some of them are headed there. <laughs> My last question at this juncture. So we are seeing a challenging atmosphere uh, around us in the economy and we've seen indecision with the government. What worries you more, the indecision or the slowdown? Slowdown is a result. Indecision is a cause. I'm concerned with governance at every level. Top, middle, bottom, central government, state government. That will include decision making. It will include less corruption. I don't use the word no corruption reduce corruption, better efficiency, good governance, corporate governance in the, gov in the private sector, good governance. And if you have good governance, your growth rate will improve. At the most, somebody can say, there's a time lag, fine. At least it will improve a year, two years later. If you don't have good governance, it will never improve. So, what the momentum in your words is taking us through, the Indian entrepreneur, not only industrialists, farmers, everybody, we all need to improve. Farmers need to improve their productivity, as I said earlier. But we are carrying this through, not the government. It's supposed to enable us. Okay, it's enabling a little bit. That will continue, but how long? So better governance, governance, governance. That will mean less inefficiency, less corruption, less indecision. And all that will mean infrastructure. And all that will mean a proper balance between environment and on the one hand, development and growth on the other, and also land acquisition. Farmers' interests must be protected. But if that means indecision or no growth and development, then there is something wrong happening. They have to go together, hand in hand. You can't say, I will never take anybody's land. Then the highways in America and Germany and Japan would not have come. It is good governance that will lead to good, inclusive growth which India needs. Okay, if it is not done in a hurry, in the next six months, one year, how bad is it going to be? Pretty bad, but how bad, we don't know. Pretty bad. It will take time. Good things take time, bad things take time. All I can hope for is, those who are responsible in the opposition, the government, they lose elections, and badly so. That's all I can hope for. Rest, what will happen, will happen. Well, on that note, thank you so much. Let's see, hope somebody is hearing this conversation and Nobody this will. parliament. <laughs> that cynicism. Yet can't, work on, I'm absolutely not, cynical. <laughs> no, but let, let's, let's hope. Fingers are crossed. I agree. God knows they might come back and want to do more, given that some of their peers are coming back to power time and again on the back of development. Thank you so much, Mr. Bajaj. Thank you. Thank you, Vinay. All the best.